Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the measly militarists, the evolved version of the pitiful pacifists. In today's video, our only real goal is to prepare for the endgame crisis, which is going to happen very, very soon. We're about to hit 2300, and since we have the crisis on as early as possible, it can spawn in any time after that. Now, it's almost certain... It's going to be the Scourge. It's almost certainly that, purely because we don't have any of the other modifiers to increase the likelihood of the Unbidden or the Contingency. No one has Synths, and no one has Jump Drives, including myself. So it's almost definitely going to be the Scourge, and thankfully their modifier is Time. The longer they don't spawn in, the increased likelihood they will spawn in the next time they have a chance. So we're probably going to get another 10, 20 years before they actually appear, which is great, because we need that time. We have only 1k research. That is just abysmal. This late in the game, especially trying to rush things, that's terrible. It's one of the worst positions I've ever been in. Not really a shock, considering this was one of the worst empires of all time. And even now, it's still... Well, it wasn't really something I'd pick when making an empire and trying to do well. So what's our goal here? Honestly, rush tech. Um, tech and a little bit of alloys, but mostly tech. We need battleships, we need all the extra habitat stuff, we just need to get all of that up and running as fast as we possibly can. Now thankfully we finally have clone vats, and our species is finally better than being the worst thing ever, so that's pretty good. At least now, we're looking like we might have a chance. We are also fanatic xenophobes, which means we are growing very, very quickly, in addition to the clone vats, so our population should explode now. I honestly feel like I'm playing an empire maybe 40 years into the game, and it's almost 100 years, and it's just insane. I actually did a little test run recently, just just off-camera, just to see how good I could min-max a basic concept with materialists, and I had 14,000 research in 100 years. So we're 14 times less than that right now. Yeah, not, not really confident just now, but hopefully we'll have a few extra years. Oh, you know, we need the influence right now, bud. I would love the extra tech, but no, we do also need the influence. We need to start putting down habitats everywhere we can. Building habitats there, over there. We need them here, we need them there. Thankfully, that wormhole seems to only connect to this, it turns out, so I was very much mistaken. Oh yeah, you stop, 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 no need for that. Yeah, this wormhole almost certainly connects to this unconnected system, which means the habitats I've been building here have been completely pointless. I only noticed that at the end of the previous video. Now, admittedly, it's not completely pointless because we have this wormhole here and no ability to build habitats, but it would probably be better if we focused on other areas first. Maybe. You know what, maybe I should just build habitats there still, and I just slowed that down. You know, I can't decide. You know, actually, yeah, let's focus on over here first, make sure we have all these habitats up. So, this one and this one are the more likely to be attacked. So that's where we should focus. So yeah, I did actually do the right thing, I just did it for weird reasons. So here's my plan over here, I've decided what we're going to do is eventually vassalize the despoilers. That doesn't mean we can't also have some claims on them during the process. So what we're going to do is grab this system, because that makes an awesome choke point, vassalize them, and eventually we can integrate them. That's going to be a while, admittedly. But I think it'll be the cheapest way. Saying that, though, integration is very, 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 very expensive itself. Though I think it might actually be how much population they have, and considering how little population they have, maybe it won't be that expensive at all. Huh, maybe. I really dislike you. Just being out there. I do. Well, not exactly what I wanted to say. Oh, no, you're not. Okay, good. You're the benevolent interventionists. Probably the best of them all to wake up. Uh, good morning. Oh, no. But there's... Is there... Militant isolationists? I've completely forgot. No, okay. So it's not 100% chance that a rival will awake. Still not what I particularly wanted to see. If we do this, do we also lose our federation? But great, good morning. Hope you had a good nap. Yep. We can't do anything about you, because we are so, so very weak. So finally it's time that we can change our empire. So first of all, we are no longer democratic, we are now imperial. 
The strongest amongst us has proclaimed themselves king or queen, and we shall follow them to glory. Or something. Now, I did make the promise I was going to keep these two civics. I don't know why I made that promise, but I did. So I'm keeping that promise as much as it hurts me. So that's going to really slow us down. So what do I want to add next then? Now, the reason why I want Imperial is the extra edict capacity. There's at least two I really want active at all times. We could go with the Ascension perk to give us plus two on top of this, but I don't really want that since I want lots of other options. So this is a nice change in my opinion. Democratic just wasn't giving us anything simple as that. It was just not helping us, especially since we already have cutthroat politics for the less edict cost. And half the time the mandates weren't being fulfilled when they were fulfilled. It's so little extra unity. So the question is, what do we want from what we can have through this? Now, there are a few options which are unique to Imperial or being a dictatorship. But I don't know which one's actually like... Okay, I actually quite like this one. Nobles are quite powerful. They can increase the stability of a planet, which is really good, similar to police state. And normally I would actually go with police state here, just a simple plus five stability on all planets. Really nice. That's just plus resources on all of our planets. We have loads of planets. We're going to be very planet heavy for a long time, since mega structures aren't really going to be our thing ever, because we're so far behind. I just don't know what I want. Distinguished Admiralty is quite nice, plus 10% fire rate, extra fleet command limit, which is okay, Admiral level cap, which is meh. Yeah, I think for now just police that. I don't know if this is the right choice, but it's nice. It instantly affects everything. There we are. Oh, we actually did fulfill that one mandate. Well done, us. Well done to our new Emperor. We have mastered a new technology. Oh, I can't wait until that Emperor dies. May sound treasonous, you know, day one. <laughs> oh, I do hope the Emperor dies. But the Princess here has this. Deep connections, plus one influence. Do you know how good that is? <laughs> Long live the Princess, down with the Empire. Day one of the Emperor being in the Emperor. I just thought, police states actually make sense law-wise as well. Now that a king has taken hold, democracy is over. He needs to project his power rule with an iron fist. Surely the military and everything helped with this, and so police state makes complete sense. Everyone will be monitored. Everyone will be obedient. This may seem a bit weird, but I've gone with one vision. And it is weird. I normally don't go with this. The reason is I have never had factions this bad before. They are all over the place. 19% support the Xenophiles, 21% are the egalitarians, just everything we're not. The militarist is just about winning, but only just, and they don't even approve of us very much. The xenophobes are decently supported, and they like us, but not supported enough, so I'm trying to get our people to start becoming more xenophobic. I'm doing everything to do that including doing the proclaimed superiority every time it comes off cooldown. Now, it is very difficult to make people change their factions in this game sometimes, but I need to. I need that influence. I'm getting so little, it's just stopping me from doing anything. I also really don't think we have time for a lot of the other ones. I would love the Colossus Project, amongst other things, but... Are we going to have enough time to even build one? I want mega structures. I want the Arcology Project. Honestly, what I think I'm going to go for is the Arcology Project, since it's a little bit cheaper to get started... So, Arcology Project, Defender of the Galaxy for a second one, Evolutionary Mastery is third, and then fourth, I don't really know right now. Maybe the Colossus Project, yeah, maybe the Colossus Project. Considering we're not going to go to war for quite some time, especially not with claims, because we just don't have the influence to do so, I've changed my policies now from, ex from expansionist to isolationist. Originally, I was going to go from expansionist to belligerent, but I'm just not going to be going to war all that much. I think eventually I will vassalize the despoilers. I'm not going to go to war with the multiplex because they're populations we simply can't keep, and I don't think purging them actually gives us anything, because although they are machines which you can normally process into alloys, they're part of a hive mind. They're part of the machine empire, so we can only exterminate them. We can't work them in any way. So they simply get removed. If I was a devouring swarm or something, eliminating them would give us resource, but since we don't have that special um, bonus for being one of the purging species, 
we get almost nothing except for the world. Now, of course, we do want the world. However, yeah, lots of influence. We need to try and turtle up as much as possible. And since I didn't really explain my reasoning well there, Isolationist gives us plus 15% admin cap, it increases our monthly unity by 10%, and increases our governing ethics traction by 25%. All things I really, really want. Right now, I just want things to leave me alone. And when I do go to war, it's not going to be with claims. It's going to be to try and vassalize other empires, make them tributaries. So we are still going to be very warlike, just not with claims. The war over here is now over. Apparently we won. I didn't do anything to help out, but still. And now... Uh, do you want you to be our tributary or our protectorate? Our protectorate can be consumed later on. Tributaries can't. But you will give us 25% of your mineral and energy income, which is actually quite a lot since you are on the higher difficulty. Yeah, 25% of all these systems would be pretty good. But if you are a protectorate, eventually we can integrate you. Thus, we get all of this land in the future, including these worlds over here. Short term versus long term. In the short term, our economy would be boosted greatly. Long term, we don't get that, but eventually we get everything. You know what? Let's go for the long term for once. Oh, yeah, not vassal. Uh, protectorate, because you're so bloody weak. We have declared war. The this will be incredibly easy. They are just as weak as they were before. Our other fleets are still on the way, I think. Yes, they are, slowly. Uh, you can start taking over other bits. Shouldn't take too long, really. Domination is finally finished, which means at last we can grab... Evolutionary Mastery. Now, the reason why I didn't pick this before is simply I didn't have the tech for it, so I was waiting for that to be researched so I could finally unlock this. So with this... It means now we can grab this, which means we have advanced traits, and finally our species will be decent. Oh, who activated the L gates? Oh, good, it's this one. Okay, we have loads of time then before we need to do anything. So, these are the nanites pretending to be a civilization. We are not allowed to go here because this is where the factory is, proving they are nanites. Okay, that's. Fine. Do I have an L gate in my territory? Okay, I do, but thankfully it's the same as this wormhole. So I need to defend that anyway. That's fine. Oh yeah, this. That's going to be really... So I have to defend this anyway. Yeah, I'm going to have to have habitats all over the darn place. Which is fine. That's what we're spending things on. Also, finally my influence has increased because my factions are finally starting to become a little bit more coherent. More support for the militarists and for the xenophobes. Hmm. Might want to remove some... Oh, wait, no, that's part of the Federation, isn't it? Free, um... Free migration. Oh, I hate this faction so much. Finally dealing with one of the Leviathans in our territory, the Matriarch. That was weaker than expected. Could have done that way earlier. Good to know. And yep, welcome aboard. So what we get is this lovely ship over here, the Ahab. And we now get all these worlds, which are a 20 Gaia world, a 14 desert, and 21 continental. Other empires are building megastructures before us. Oh boy. We are... So very weak. Another empire willingly joins us. Lovely. The Axis grows in strength. Still doesn't sound right to say, but yep, yeah, that's us still. Also currently in charge of our Federation is the Despoilers. Because apparently, I didn't realise. Because <laughs> it's been so long since I've had vassals. The yeah, the subjects could just join. Don't know how they instantly took control, but they did. Well, eventually we're going to consume them anyway, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Glad to have you aboard. Okay, I'm sure I've edited the video to show exactly what I did here. But I've made them my tributary, not my protectorate. Because I was just reading subjugation. 
and that's me being dyslexic and being really bad at reading things quickly. So when you go to war with someone to decide if you make them your vassal or your tributary, it has vassal and tributary there. I thought vassal was on top. Both of them then have subjugation next to it. I read subjugation. I didn't read the rest. So... Yeah. I don't know what else to say other than whoops. They are permanently going to be our tributary, giving us 25% of their minerals and energy. We can work around it to make them into our vassal, but it's a bit awkward to do right now. And, and honestly, we didn't have the influence to make them integrated anyway. It would have cost a fortune. Either way. Not best pleased with myself right now, gotta be honest. We now we attack the Ether Drake. Lovely. 300 influence, that's the main thing there. And we get the relic. When activated, it increases everyone, everyone's happiness, which is lovely, but we yet need the influence to build more habitats. Not only habitats to secure our borders, but also habitats for rare resources and everything else. Victory. Okay, science vessel, I'm afraid. When did your scientist die? Well, either way. Get your butt over there, please. In fact, no, change of plan. You're going to go back to assisting research like you're meant to be doing. You go and grab that. And there we go. All of you return home. Which should be over here. We have managed to make giant slugs. Sure. Hello, giant slugs. Oh, and your proles. Okay. So you're really good at food and mineral production, pretty much terrible for everything else. You can still be leaders though, which is surprising. So it's a bit like the servile one, just not quite as extreme. Don't know where to put you, to be perfectly honest, but I do like you. You might be our first nerve uh, our first nerve stapled species. We could also make you delicious, since that food bonus will stack with that. In fact, if we give them agrarian as well, that does work, because being devoured apparently counts as a job. Could go with that. You know what? Sure. You're our food species. We will now dine on slug. I've decided to go with Colossus, so now we can build the Colossus very, very soon, which means we can have total war. And with total war, we can just claim huge sections of the galaxy as soon as we're strong enough to fight them. Obviously, the Multiplex here is a fantastic target, though they are very, very strong. Right now, they are stronger than us. The machines are also a great target, and actually, probably who I'm going to go for first. So this bit of territory will be mine. Sadly, I won't get any populations out of this. But I will get a lot of worlds and a huge chunk of territory for us to continue to improve on. Okay, that is actually very light. 37 years after they could spawn, they finally spawned. The Scourge will be upon us very soon. And are we in a position to defend against them? Weirdly, yes. They will kill us. But we have defensive structures on every single possible entry point. The weakest spot is here, though this is also likely to be the last place they would breach. There's two habitats there, there's four habitats there, there's two there, there's going to be two there very soon once that's colonized. There's at least six here. Yeah, we're actually very capable of just stalling them for tens and tens of years. I think we're going to be okay. And as long as they spawn... El well, if they spawn in our territory, honestly speaking, we're done. It's the end. I don't think we could possibly run away fast enough. We can't capture more territory and just outpace them in a bit of a weird base rush um, scenario. But as long as they don't spawn directly in our territory, I think 
we're okay. The best place them to spawn is here. The worst place is obviously in our territory. Second worst would be, well, just next to us. Or in the miserable machines territory, because I, I want to claim this area, but also there is this wormhole problem. Okay, I'm nervous still. They will break through the world. They can still destroy the habitats. It just takes them some time. We are still so incredibly far behind. I was hoping to snowball a bit faster than this, but it just hasn't happened. Damn. Okay, so the breach point is the miserable machines. You know they're actually going to reach that way faster than I thought they would. If they spawned over here, it would have been better, or even further here. Okay, uh, anyone who was building habitats anywhere else, except for there, which is going to be... Um, these are going to be economy based, so you need to move over here. Just completely reinforce these two bits of territory. Damn. That is really disappointing. Still, they're likely to spread out a bit evenly. Actually, no, they're not, are they? No, yeah, they could spread out a bit this way if we're lucky, but almost certainly then go straight for that wormhole. Okay, let's just do some final bits of prep. Please, please, please be strong enough to deal with this. Subspace signal. And they have arrived! Lovely. Okay, this is going to be our Thrall world, which are currently researching. Come on, thank you. It's 100 influence for it, but I still think it's going to be worth it, just because this will deal with all of our food problems. Going to put the slugs there very, very soon. Oh, that's rather sad. <laughs> the Scourge has devoured the home world of the space whales. Ah, That's really sad. Meanies. Okay, we have our Thrall world, our Thrall world, our world where these fellows live. Which increases population growth by 50%, though you can't do all that many buildings and you get access to very special, very brutal buildings. Oof. That is horrifying. You know, we'll let you join us if you... Promise to play nice. Nope, because people hate the despoilers. Of course they do. We have mastered a new technology. On the upside, my economy is finally balanced and doing okay now. Again, we are now at 5k tech. We are, well, we were producing more alloys, but I had to scale it back a little bit. So our science is now getting underway. Our defenses are going to be okay, I think, to at least withhold... A few tens of years, maybe. And the future's looking... Difficult, but maybe okay. So I'm going to be calling the episode here, because I want to actually plan what I do next. I think today, I have probably played the worst that I have done in a while. I don't think I've played so horrendously I've doomed myself, but the obvious mistake with the spoilers, turns out wasn't that much of a mistake, because my economy was so bad, having them as tributaries probably saved me, but it's still a mistake nonetheless. And just a few of the ideas I had in terms of our habitats and such were a little bit silly. I think I overcommitted to these two, for instance. I have way too many habitats here, way too many habitats over here. None of them are producing any economy, which would really help, or research or anything like that. They're just going to be sitting there now. But of course, actually, now I've said that, what I can start doing is converting them into proper habitats. So removing the soldiers and adding anything else. Although we do need the soldiers for our navy capacity, that we can fix in other ways as well. These habitats, though, could all become something more useful. Things like science or alloy production or consumer goods. Loads of things we really do need from these. So I will be converting those next time. But like I say, I am going to have a bit of a think about what to do next. We're in a very bad position, which is to be expected considering... Half of this playthrough so far was playing the worst empire ever, and still, this isn't a good empire. Even now, this is just not a good empire, and our emperor refuses to die. <laughs> Eventually, the princess will become the empress, and we will get that extra influence one day. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. 
in the next episode, I'll probably do one final episode where it's a super episode, an hour long or so, where I finish off everything. And I think I'm going to need a lot of good luck. And perhaps a bit of sleep so I can actually play decently. Maybe I'm being a bit hard on myself, but I am very annoyed at myself at the moment. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. Love this game, but it can be so easy to make mistakes.